<coughs> Here is the making of Pasteurizing Tank 2.0. Uh, this is the second Pasteurizing Tank that I've made. My first one had some design flaws that needed worked out. And here is the old tank. I use, you can see, it's a large, about 50 gallon, uh, just regular garbage can. And I drilled a hole in the bottom here and inserted a 1500 watt hot water tank heater. Now, the issue that I had with this were actually a couple issues. One was, on the, on the other side, I, I tried to put a little uh, drain. So there are a couple issues I ran into with this. One was that <clears throat> I didn't anticipate the plastic being impossible for anything to bind to. Should have foreseen that. I think I'm pretty sure it's polyethylene. Polyethylene just doesn't really like to bind with much of anything. So when I went to insert the hot water heater, there were some issues with that too. But I was never able to get it to seal correctly because the silicone does not stick to polyethylene so it just you know leaked a little bit which was fine it didn't leak very much but anytime you have water dripping around 1500 watts of energy it's going to be cause for concern uh, so a couple of the issues that I had with inserting the hot water heater were that one the sealant but also I drilled the hole and put the wa hot water heater tried to thread it directly into the hole that I drilled now when I used the drill bit to drill this hole this is also, I didn't have much experience in drilling in plastic, so the, the, the hole was slightly uh, jagged in a couple of places, thus decreasing, further decreasing, uh, the quality of the seal generated. And it was the same story with the drain on the other side. I was just never able to get it to seal very well, so it, it just ripped. So in order to try to correct that, instead of going out and buying another garbage can, because those garbage cans cost about 50 bucks, I inquired with a local bottling company to see if I'd be able to obtain one of their uh, used empty 55 gallon drums because once they're done with these drums they just recycle them and toss them out so if you're interested in finding a 55 gallon drum then try calling some of your local bottling companies or just any other uh, large industrial food processing plants and they'll probably have a whole warehouse of these and they'll, just, they'll be happy to let you come and take one and drag it away. I got this one for free. I mean it saved me you know like 80 bucks. It also work excellent for rain barrels. If you want a rain barrel, go get one of these tubs. It'll save you about 80 bucks, because those cost about 80 bucks for whatever reason. Anyway, to address some of the problems from last time, I took the tub and I took the barrel and sawed the top off, just using a regular uh, handheld jigsaw. And then I drilled a hole down in the bottom and I did a test run this time. So I sized the drill bit and tested it and did a test run here to make sure that it was actually the right size for I drilled my real hole. And what it is that you see in there right now is a PVC coupler. It's threaded on one end, not threaded on the other end. It's like a one inch or one and a quarter inch, I don't know. It's whatever the hot water heater fit into. So now that I have this snug in the side of the barrel then these threads will let me just screw the uh, hot water heater element directly into the PVC coupler and I'll be able to put some Teflon tape around here to uh, improve the seal and I, I'm thinking I also might uh, take the PVC coupler and fill it up on the inside with a epoxy or a silicone or something so that way all of this in here will be embedded and silicone inside the PVC pipe. And that should help prevent leaks much more effectively than the old design that I have. This, this will also be much uh, sturdier, much more robust. So then once this is a uh, JB Weld quick dry epoxy that I use to seal up the uh, PVC around uh, the barrel, and then I also probably can't really see it at all, but I took a utility knife and created crisscross scores all around the hole. So all, sorry, all around this area here, it's all roughed up and jagged, and there's like a grid of crisscrosses that are cut into it. And that should help the silicone bind to something, uh, because polyethylene has what's called a very low surface energy, meaning that it has a very low entropy, so it's very flat 
very stable. There's not really any pits or cavities or caves or pores or anything in it that will allow any glue or adhesive to grip into it. So what you need to do is you need to, it's called, it's, it's called increasing the surface energy. And that can be done, you know, just by scoring it or scraping it or doing whatever. If you want to get real technical, then you could do what's called a corona treatment where you just get a high voltage, uh, low amp uh, electric spark, kind of like from a spark plug, and then you just zap the hell out of the surface of the, the plastic or on the area you want to bind. And then that should uh, drastically increase uh, the binding strength that you have. But then once this is dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill all this area in around it with silicone and put the hot water heater element in and then fill it up with silicone on the inside and then seal the inside too with silicone and hopefully that'll prevent these problems I was having before with uh, water dripping out around the hot water heater element. Also with this tank, because it's uh, opaque plastic, I'll be able to see much easier how much water is actually inside the tub. I thought about putting a water gauge on the last one, you know, it's just a clear section of PVC pipe, or a, P a clear section of pipe that comes out and goes out and then goes back in. That would let you see how high the water is. Uh, but then again, you know, <laughs> you gotta deal with more holes and you gotta deal with more joints and these things are virtually impossible to keep sealed and keep from leaking. So this should improve the operation significantly. And as for a drain, I'm thinking probably what I'm going to do is just simply drill another hole near the bottom on the other side and just stick a stopper in it, like a, just the regular uh, bung stopper. And then when I'm done, I can just pull the stopper out and let the water drain and drip out, and then I'll have uh, a big tub full of pasteurized substrate left over to, to use. Okay, what I just did is I just put another layer of sealant. I figure maybe I can bypass the uh, the low bonding property of high density polyethylene by a combination of increasing the surface energy by doing a whole bunch of scoring with my trusty utility knife here all around the area that I want to glue and then also on top of that put multiple layers of uh, sealant so like I mentioned earlier what I did first was use this stuff here JB Quick Epoxy to put a ring around the PVC adapter before I slid it into uh, the hole that I drilled. And now that that's been in there for a little while and it's starting to, the JB Quick Weld is set up. Next, I went and I used plastic Loctite uh, plastic flexible adhesive. I originally got flexible adhesive because I wasn't sure how flexible the uh, barrel itself was. So I put this around the inside down in there and when you do this I had to you know crawl down inside the barrel and stay down in there. I would advise using a respirator mask when you do that because as anybody knows who buys super glue from Walmart they card you for it and there's a reason they card you for it and it's because teenagers can't get their hands on anything better to get high on so they go try to buy super glue and huff it. It will fuck you up, and it won't fuck you up in a good way. It will fuck with your brain, and you'll lose neurons, which is not a good thing. So, wear a respirator with a uh, volatile organic compounds and uh, you know organic solvent filter on it, because this has methyl ethyl ketone in it, which is a type of paint thinner, and you don't want to be crawled down laying inside a barrel on the floor with a bunch of paint thinner fumes filling it up. That's an easy way to pass out. Plus it burns your eyes real bad. So now, after I let that set it for a while, then I'm gonna get some silicone, and silicone the inside, and silicone the outside, all around the PVC pipe, and try to get that welded. And once the silicone's set up, then we'll get the heating element installed. So, we'll pick up from there. So now I have the silicone all around the outside of where the heating element's gonna go and it's uh, also packed around the inside too. And I'm wrapping <clears throat> the heating element uh, with Teflon tape to help provide a stronger seal uh, inside the epoxy. Okay, I'm happy to say that the pasteurizer is now unofficially done. Uh, I have it wired in, uh, the heating element is installed, 
There's only just a couple of steps left that I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the final setup here. So you can see the heating element inside. It's a 1500 watt uh, water heater electric heating element. And those two blocks there are rests, which is what I will set my 35 gallon strainer on. And this is just a 35 gallon metal garbage can that I drilled holes all up and down the sides and then the bottom too. So it's just a giant seed. So I take this and lift it into here and then you know heat up the water and pasteurize it and everything. And what I have yet to do is I'm going to put a board up here and attach a pulley to it so then I can uh, have a rope tied to either you know the handles and be able to hoist it up out of the water and uh, you know swing it over and set it down on the ground uh, for use. I'm also going to drill a bung hole right about down yonder uh, it's for a stopper for a drain and I have a you know just drain on the ground here and I have a the sump pump here that it'll drain into. Uh, for the electric it has its own dedicated outlet on the breaker box and I fed the cord up along the ceiling here along the rafters to a thermostat that's set at 160 degrees then to a switch and the cord runs back along, zigzags back, and then slopes down. I originally had the cord coming down directly from here down to the tank, but what I was concerned about was how straight up and down the, the cable was going to be near the top of the tank. And when this is hot, you know, there's going to be a bunch of steam and condensation and such coming out of it. I didn't want water to recondensate on the core that would be right here then drip down and mess with my electronics or mess with the, with the like electric connections so that's why I zigged it back and then kind of did a, a side feed and you notice all the cables are off of the floor the tub is sitting on a, on a wooden rest so everything is up off the floor there's no cables on the floor uh, and when the water drains it will be draining over here so all of this over here should stay dry so when I'm done pasteurizing, I'll pull the bung, let the water drain out, and this will sit in there and let it sit overnight and let it drip dry. Probably keep a lid on the barrel during that time. And then I'll be able to come in the next day and hoist it out and use it. Oh, the one last thing that I'm going to do is after, right now the, uh, the silicone is still drying. Uh, but after the silicone is dried, then I'm going to seal all of this up with a liquid electrical tape so then it should be all completely insulated and sealed. I hadn't decided exactly what to do about the ground yet. I previously tried grounding the ground to uh, the outside of the water heating element and I realized well that's not real effective because this is insulated from everything and also this doesn't really solder onto that, at least not with the type of solder that I had. So what I was considering was taking the ground and extending extending it up and having the ground having the water itself be grounded uh, but I haven't done that yet because I need to do a little bit more research into proper wiring and proper grounding before I go do something like that so in the meantime I just have it set up so that way I don't have to be you know that so that way there's no risk of me standing in a puddle of water or having water on the floor while I'm working on this and I have a on off switch over here where I can stand several feet away <laughs> from that just to make sure that there's no water or anything standing on the floor when I switch this thing on. So this is definitely a major improvement from my last design. And hopefully uh, soon I'll have some substrate pasteurized. And here's the finished pasteurizing tank being filled up with water to test whether or not the seal is working. And so far, it's hard to see, but there we go. Now you can see how how high how high up uh, it's filled, and it's the water level is up to here on a tank. So it's a full two thirds of the way full, which is probably about where it will be once it has a bucket. Uh, you know this this bucket here full, or a trash can here full of substrate loaded into it. And for a drain, I drilled a hole 
and used a bung that goes for a five gallon fermenter that you can pick up at you know like a local home brewing store and I sealed up the uh, electrical terminals on the water heating element with liquid electrical tape and you can see that everything around it is dry no drips no leaks no runs nothing at least so far hopefully that holds up after the heating element heats up and everything. So apparently having a real nice snug fit for the PVC adapter, it was so snug I had to sand both the hole that I drilled and I sanded the outside of the PVC coupler in order to be able to get it to fit in there and it really had to be shoved in. And then once it was shoved, or you know, once I found, got a good fit for it, then put the ring again of a JB Quick Weld Epoxy around the outer rim and then shoved it back in and uh, then the, you let JB epoxy set up for a couple hours and then sealed the inside with uh, elastic or a flexible Loctite plastic glue after roughing up the polyethylene to increase the surface energy with a utility blade and you really score it real well, give it a whole lot of area, surface area to grab onto. And then once that had sealed up on the inside, or once that uh, dried on the inside, then I liberally sealed both the inside and the outside with silicone. And again, you know, really rough up the surface a whole bunch. I can't stress that enough, or else the silicone won't stick and it won't seal. But if you really give it a good roughing and then use multiple layers of sealant of different types of things, then apparently, that will do the job. The last modification that I'm going to make will be to use a uh, stopper with a hole so I can stick a thermometer and then see what the temperature is without having to open it. And I'll get to that here shortly.